Starting off at our number 10 spot, we have The Close Call. This story comes from a guy who loves cars, but had a weird moment about 15 years ago that he just couldn't get off of his mind. When he was in his early 20s, he loved to speed in cars and just wanted to go fast. His friend had a car that he really wanted to drive, and one day it just turned out to be his lucky day and his friend finally gave in. He hopped in the driver's seat with his friend who owned the car in the passenger seat and another buddy in the back and off they went. They went to an empty freeway around 3 a.m. and put the pedal to the metal. Once they hit around 135 miles per hour, they began to see a bunch of semi-trucks. There were three basically driving side by side, taking up all three of the lanes and certainly not going as fast as our speed demon friend. He thought to himself that there was an on-ramp coming up and he would just use that as some extra room to pass, but unfortunately as he approached the on-ramp, another semi was entering the freeway and occupying that fourth lane. With all four semis lined up, he was approaching too fast with no time to break, so he closed his eyes and prepared for the worst. But then, nothing happened. He opened his eyes and the other guys in the car were just as confused as he was. Somehow they were now in front of all of the semis, but there was literally no room for them to have passed by them. This was the end of his speeding career as he was super spooked as to what possibly just happened. Was this a real world glitch or did he somehow enter a reality where he wasn't in an extremely dangerous and potentially fatal situation? In our number 9 spot today we have The Strange Storm. This story goes that a couple were at home just doing some household chores when something super strange happened to them. The husband went to open the front door to toss a dirty rug out of the house and it was just completely pitch black outside. The weird part is that it was at 2 p.m. and from inside the house it looked like a regular sunny afternoon with light coming in from the windows. They said that suddenly outside the front door where it was dark, it's like the sun was a light bulb and it just went on, then off again, and then on. They described it like the flickering a light bulb does right before it's burnt out. The wife asked her husband if he had seen that and he replied, yes, what just happened? They also said there weren't any clouds out either, so it couldn't have been a cloud blocking the sun. Were they transported to some alternate reality for a second? I honestly have no explanation for what the pair witnessed. In our number 8 spot today we have The Disappearing Town. This story comes from a person who often commutes to a town around 3 hours away from the one that they live in. One day they were doing the 3 hour drive with their mom and they got to the part that takes about a third of the entire drive and it's an area that just has a lot of like mountains and cliffs and nature. So the person telling the story is in the passenger seat and their mom is driving and as they look out the side of the window over one of the cliffs, they see a small community that they had never seen before. The community looked nice and it consisted of mostly bungalows, which is apparently not normal for the area. Both them and their mom were super confused as to how they had never seen this community before, but it gets even weirder. They never saw the community again. It just disappeared as quickly as it appeared. Did they accidentally drive into another dimension one day? In our number 7 spot today, we have slightly different. One morning in 2008, a woman named Lorena woke up in a life that was similar to the one she was living in when she went to sleep, but certainly not the same. At first, it was just things like her bedsheets and pajamas, but when she got to work, things began to escalate. Lorena realized that her office wasn't her office and that she worked in the same building but in a completely different apartment. She had never even met her boss before, so she knew this couldn't have just been a moment where she got lost or confused. When she returned home after the workday, she was met by her ex-boyfriend, only to find out that he was apparently her current boyfriend. She tried to find the person that she had been dating for months, but he didn't seem to exist in this new life and world that she now found herself in. Lorena began to seek psychiatric help because she was fearing she was having some sort of nervous breakdown, but all the tests revealed that she seemed to be of sound body and mind. The strange occurrences continued when Lorena asked her family how her sister was doing. Lorena knew that her sister had recently had shoulder surgery and she wanted to check in, but when she asked her family, they were baffled by her claims and insisted that there was no surgery that had taken place on anyone in the family. Lorena couldn't find any answers to her situation and was having no luck with a medical explanation either. She is convinced that she went to sleep one night and woke up in a parallel universe that was altered slightly by small decisions that she had made. 
Honestly, after all of these stories, I think I kind of might leave her too. In our number six spot today, we have moving. So this story comes from Reddit and it starts off one day when a guy gets a call from his neighbors asking him if he can help them move a mattress upstairs. They had a good relationship with the neighbors, so of course he was willing to help. When he got there, they got the mattress all moved and the neighbors asked if he wouldn't mind helping with an armoire as well. No problem, he thought as he began to help them move that one up the stairs as well. This is when things went awry, however. There were 11 stairs at the front, he was on the lower end carrying the armor, and about six steps up, his friend at the top lost a handle on it, and the whole thing came crashing down on him since he was of course at the bottom. He loses his balance and falls backwards towards the pavement, and this man actually remembers dying from this fall. The next thing he remembers though is waking up in his dining room with his phone ringing and his wife asking him if he's going to answer the phone. He is obviously super super freaked out because he literally just remembers dying two seconds ago but now he's here. When he answers the phone, it's his neighbor asking if he can help move a mattress up the stairs. He surprisingly goes over again to help and when he gets there he says he can help with the mattress but not with the armor. This neighbor is shocked because he doesn't know how he could have possibly known about the armor. Did the guy have some sort of premonition or did his death in one reality bring him into a different one? Who knows, but I hope he's taking advantage of this second lease on life. In our number 5 spot today we have the breath. This reddit post comes from the user cat22l and they wrote quote, About 30 seconds ago I was sitting on the couch as my dog walked by to go sit on her bed we have behind the L part of the sectional. She had something small caught in her throat last night, I think a popcorn shell, so I was paying attention to her breathing just to make sure she got it out. For a few minutes she was breathing fine and then what sounded like a light snore started happening. This is semi normal for her depending on what position she's laying in so I didn't bother to go over and check on her. That went on for about 5 minutes until the most disgusting and to my now realization terrifying snore slash cough slash wheezing sounds started happening. I go over to her to make sure she's okay and the exact moment I looked at her bed the sound stopped mid breath and she wasn't there. She was outside with my parents and had been for around 30 minutes. There's no way to get out of the room without walking right past me. I don't know whose dog I saw and what was making that creepy ass sound 5 feet away from me, but I'm going to be staying outside for the rest of the day and hiring an exorcist. Maybe this is a weird parallel universe story or maybe this is just a full on demon. What do you guys think? In our number 4 spot today we have the road trip. One day in 2006 a woman named Carol was driving through San Bernardino, California on her way to Paris, California where she was going to stay for a few days. On her travels she saw a sign for Riverside which was nearby and she decided that since her family had roots there maybe it was time to stop in for a visit. As she went into Riverside she realized that everything looked different from how she remembered it and she was unable to find her old house that she grew up in. She tried to go to the street that her grandmother used to live on, but that one was different too. And when she tried to visit her grandparents' graves at the cemetery, the whole place didn't even exist. Even the people who were living in the town gave Carol a bad feeling, and she didn't even want to get out of her car. She decided she would be better off just continuing on her trip, and she left Riverside. Carol didn't return to Riverside until a few years later after her dad had passed away and she was attending the funeral. To Carol's surprise, when she went to Riverside this time, everything was as she remembered it from her childhood. Childhood. Carol believes that somehow that day she ended up in some sort of a parallel universe form of Riverside and she even said that she felt like if she left her car that day she was going to get stuck there. In our number 3 spot today we have the new location. So one day this person was driving to work on the same route that they took every single day. They worked the whole day through and got into their car to head back home on the same path. As they're driving they start feeling super super anxious and like on the verge of a panic attack. They keep driving and then they suddenly see this huge power plant all lit up. They're super confused because they drive this road every single day, how could they miss this glaringly obvious thing? Then their boyfriend calls and asks them to pick up McDonald's on the way home. No problem, they go through the drive through When they get to the window, they see an employee they've never seen before even though they are at this same McDonald's almost every single day, and this new employee is the only one there and they say that they've been working there for around 2 months. 
They take the food and head home and when they get there, they begin to tell the boyfriend about this strange power plant that they saw. Their boyfriend explains that it's always been there so he doesn't know what they're talking about. Now every day they drive past this power plant with no idea how it got there or how they had missed it, but they've also noticed a few other small differences in their life. Their dog doesn't know the tricks it used to know or how their boyfriend pronounces some words differently from before. Maybe they slipped into a new dimension on their drive home from work that day. In our number two spot today we have Honey. This story starts off with a woman who we'll call Anna, having her bi-weekly phone call with her mom just to catch up and see what's going on. Anna's mom unfortunately had to inform her that Anna's sister's dog named Honey had passed away. Anna was obviously super upset at this loss and called her sister to check in after hearing the news. Anna asked tons of questions about where they were planning to bury her, as well as asking how her sister's son was doing with the loss. Anna told her boyfriend how upset she was about the loss of the dog, as they had really had a bond. Flash forward a couple of months and Anna is heading home for Thanksgiving. Her sister was heading out of town to spend the holiday with her in-laws, so she left her pets at the parents' house so that they could be watched over. As Anna walks into her parents' home, she sees Honey, healthy as can be, sitting in the living room. Anna was of course overjoyed, but asked her mom why she had told her that Honey died. Anna's mom was very confused and said that that conversation never happened. After leaving her parents, Anna asked her boyfriend and he said he was super glad that she brought it up because he also remembered this conversation. Did they somehow enter a world where Honey was still alive? While this would be such an amazing surprise, it would also be unbelievably creepy. In our number one spot today, we have The Crosswalk. Okay, maybe a parallel universe story, maybe a glitch in the matrix story. Either way, when I came across this one on Reddit, it actually gave me goosebumps because it was just so strange. So let me set the stage for you. The original poster of this story for a few weeks prior to this incident had been noticing this sort of mundane thing that he found that many people did. The thing was how pedestrians will wait at a crosswalk until the walk sign comes on and when it does, he was finding that people will usually pull their cell phones out of their pocket and look at them as they walk across the street. Nothing too strange there, it was just a thing that he had noticed. So flash forward to this specific incident, this guy is driving with his daughter. He goes on to write, quote, We stopped at a red light at a crossing and there was a man standing there. Nothing out of the ordinary, denim jacket, black cap, glasses, around six foot two. I thought I'd try to weird out my young daughter. She's five, so I knew this was going to blow her damn mind. So I said, see that man? When the walking man goes green and he starts to walk across, he'll reach into his pocket and pull out his phone and start looking at it. Watch and see. As he walks across, he reaches into his pocket, but then immediately takes his hand out and looks and points right at me with his mouth open smiling like a gotcha stance. Of course, my daughter found this absolutely hilarious, and I sat there completely mind blown. I must have sat there in silence looking at him walk across for the next 10 seconds. I drove on and had a look at him as I drove past and he was smirking and laughing. Of course, of course, I'm thinking that he must have heard this guy somehow, but the poster goes on to say that the windows were up, the radio was on, his voice was at a completely normal volume, and this crosswalk guy would have been like 15 to 20 feet away. He finishes the post by saying, quote, I can't figure out at all how he could have heard me. It's literally impossible. How did he know I was trying to predict he'd reach into his pocket for his phone? The only even remote possibility I can think of is that he has had the same observation as me and thought I might be thinking the same thing, so he just went for it. But realistically, what are even the chances of this? This story truly is just an incredibly weird one. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle is the mecca when it comes to mysterious disappearances and rumors and urban legends, so of course it had to make it onto this list. The Triangle, which sits in between Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda, earned its deadly reputation starting back in the 1970s. Since then, there has been about 80 aircrafts and 60 boats that have gone missing in the Triangle, which only fueled rumors that there was some sort of force or supernatural cause that was making this area one where people would often go missing. There have been intense electrical forces and tunnel-like clouds reported in the triangle, which some believe is the cause for the disappearances, some others believe it's weather patterns, some believe it's the entrance to a parallel universe or a place where aliens like to abduct their victims, and some people like to dismiss the idea that there's any sort of mystery at all. At this point, exactly what is going on with the Bermuda Triangle remains a mystery. In our number 9 spot today, we have 
have the Oregon Vortex. Just off of Interstate 5 in Southern Oregon lies what is called the Oregon Vortex. According to local legend, it is said that this area and the strange and mysterious stories surrounding it aren't just modern legends, but that perhaps it stems back further. People have said that the stories of the Oregon Vortex actually stem back to when indigenous Americans referred to it as the Forbidden Land. It is said that during these times, people traveling on horses would often find that their horses would be refusing to go into the area, so clearly something strange was going on in there that was spooking the animals. Scientists have speculated that the land might contain some kind of crossed magnetic lines that produce some sort of force field, but whatever it really is, the place is truly strange. Things appear very differently here. It's sort of like an optical illusion. The area is basically a parallel universe in itself. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Challenger Deep. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known point in our ocean, around 10,900 meters deep. It is located in the Pacific Ocean in the southern part of the Mariana Trench, and because of its location, lack of light, and immense pressure, it hasn't been explored very much. The extreme environment has certainly set up for there to be a whole host of species that we know absolutely nothing about, but it is not an area that can be easily explored by humans. The Challenger Deep has only been visited four times, and only for short periods of time, so there is so much more that is waiting to be uncovered at this deep, dark part of our ocean, and I don't know about you, but I feel like there are insane amounts of ocean creatures that could fully be aliens. They are so strange and interesting and unique, so who in the world knows what really lurks down there? In our number 7 spot today, we have Point Nemo. I'm sure there's a few of us out there who dream of time alone, away from other people, and Point Nemo is exactly that. It's like a parallel universe where if you were to visit, you'd feel like you were the only person on Earth. This is the most remote location on Earth. It's officially known as the Oceanic Hole of Inaccessibility because it is the furthest point away from land. This area is surrounded by more than a thousand miles of ocean in every direction. There are obviously no humans who live even close to Point Nemo, which is why it is called that in the first place, Nemo being Latin for no one. This location is so isolated that the closest people to Nemo aren't even on this Earth. Since the inhabited areas closest to the point is over a thousand miles away, the humans aboard the ISS are way closer than anyone on land. Truly just wild. Kind of sounds like a dream. Kind of sounds like a nightmare. In our number 6 spot today, we have Kawa Ijen. Located in Indonesia, this is one of the most remarkable and interesting places on Earth. Firstly, this active volcano emits hot, flammable sulfurous gases. These gases ignite as they enter the oxygen-rich atmosphere of Earth, and this causes them to burn with a stunning blue flame. Further scientific processes also allows for there to be a flow of molten sulfur that also has that same striking blue flame. At night is really when you get quite a show from this coloring, as it quite literally looks like a flow of blue lava. The other incredible thing about this location is that there is a one kilometer wide caldera that is filled with turquoise blue water. The watercolor, while it looks gorgeous, is a result of extreme acidity as well as a high concentration of dissolved metals. It is an astonishing place to look at and really is quite magnificent. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Devil's Kettle. This area is said to hold one of Minnesota's greatest mysteries. As the Brule River flows through in order to make its way toward Lake Superior, there is a point where it makes an 800 foot drop in 8 miles. Because of this journey through time, waterfalls have been created as the water erodes the rocky terrain. One waterfall in particular is the one that we want to talk about today. The stream splits into two as it falls over the edge. One of the two streams flows exactly how you would think it does, while the other is a little more mysterious. On this side, the water rushes into a cavern that seems to go nowhere. The cavern never fills up somehow, but no one can figure out where the water is going. It's a strange phenomenon that has resulted in the fall gaining the nickname the Devil's Kettle. It is said that people have tried to place things in the water that might help show them where the water is flowing to, but despite these efforts, the items were just never seen again. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Pyramids of Giza. One of the most mysterious places on Earth has to be the Pyramids of Giza. I mean, how? For centuries, people have wondered and tried to find answers as to how they were built at all, let alone with limited resources and without the use of modern technology. And they've been around for the last 4 thousand years, so the durability alone is outstanding. This alone is the source of much mystery, but that's only the outside of them. What lies on the inside might just be even more so. The pyramids of Giza, especially the Great Pyramid of Giza, were believed to have been built as tombs for rulers and other wealthy people. That 
totally makes sense. Except for the fact that there hasn't been any mummies found inside of them. Instead, there is just a plethora of secret, unexplored rooms, hidden doors and mirrors, you know, just regular ancient Egypt stuff. Many of these secret rooms remain completely unexplored over fear of damage. One more strange thing about these incredible creations, before we move on though, they were built on the center of the earth. However they did this, they aligned them perfectly with Orion's belt, with no technology, just pure brilliance. I'm just saying, if anywhere is going to take you to a parallel universe, these pyramids will take you back in time to a completely different world. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Crooked Forest. Forests are already creepy. This one looks like it's straight out of a Tim Burton film. The Crooked Forest in Poland. There's around 400 odd shaped pine trees near the town Grafino. These trees are about 90 years old, and all of them, from the base, they immediately bend towards the north and then slowly curve back towards the sky like the other trees. Despite the odd bend, these trees are otherwise healthy. There's been so many theories, but none of them really stick. Some suggest it was a gravitational anomaly, but that's a little too far-fetched for me. I don't know. This isn't interstellar, right? Other theories claim that there were heavy snowfalls that would weigh down the branches, which could check out, but why is it just a select amount? I've also lived in Canada my entire life. We have lots of snow, and I've never seen a sleepy hollow tree before. My favorite theory is that farmers were trying to make the tree curved on on purpose to make stronger wheels because the grain direction would make for naturally curved wheels. Again though, nobody knows for sure. What are your thoughts? Do we like the wheel theory? I'm just gonna keep a spare tree tire just in case. Keep it stored safely in the trunk. Okay, jokes. I'm funny. In our number two spot today, we have the Catatumbo River. Basically, in western Venezuela, right over the Catatumbo River, there are these insane, intense lightning storms, and it's a complete atmospheric phenomenon. This lightning occurs 140 to 160 nights a year, 9 hours per day, and from 16 to 40 times per minute. That is absolutely insane. That is so much lightning. Another thing that's so fascinating about this lightning is that it is colorful, and it doesn't produce any thunder. The lightning does change its frequency up from time to time, and at one point it stopped for a few weeks and people thought that maybe it was going to have been exhausted forever, but that changed when the lightning came back, putting it right back on our list of mysteries that we just can't quite figure out. Many people have studied the lightning, trying to figure out how exactly it has been created, and what makes this phenomena what it is, but we just aren't quite sure yet. And finally, in our number one spot today, we have the reverse waterfall. This mysterious and strange location is another one that comes from India. Here there is a waterfall, but it's got a catch. While we all of course expect to see water cascading down, when we think of a waterfall, this strange location instead sees the water moving towards the sky. Some people believe it's because of some anti-gravitational force, others think it's due to the heavy air pressure, and I'm not a scientist, so I'll let you decide. While this is certainly quite a strange place, it also definitely delivers when it comes to beauty. Starting off this countdown, we have the warning. This individual actually received a signal from his parallel universe self, and had he not, he might have actually died. So the narrator, who wants to remain anonymous, let's call him Robbie, was out walking one day when he saw a version of himself across the street. At first, he thought he was just seeing things, but surely right across the street was himself just staring at him. He was dressed in identical clothing and everything. Robbie stopped and stared at him when all of a sudden his twin yelled out, run. At that moment, a car came hurtling towards Robbie's twin. He saw himself get hit by the car, so he turned and he ran. And it's a good thing that he did, because seconds later, that same car came hurtling towards him. He looked back and Robbie in the car that hit him was gone, but there was a real accident that occurred right in front of his eyes. Had he not run, he would have been hit and killed. So he believes that his parallel universe self saved himself from dying. In our ninth spot today, we have the reverse signals. In 2016 and in 2018, scientists in Antarctica discovered radio pulses being emitted from the ground. The radio pulses detected high energy neutrinos and were discovered by the Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, otherwise known as ANITA. But here's the weird thing. The signals were coming up out of the Earth and heading towards the sky. Since the signals were coming up from the Earth instead of down from space, people believe that they may be traveling back in time and therefore from a parallel universe. For this universe, the Big Bang represents the end and not the beginning. Coming in at number 8, we have Euronymous. This story really freaking gives me the creeps. Basically, a Norwegian black metal fan believes that he's stuck in the wrong universe. 
So the story was posted by I Love Transylvania on Reddit. They asked for help and advice. It all started when he woke up and found out that his favorite musician, Euronymous, had died. But not recently. He died in 1993. Immediately, he thought that this was some kind of joke because just recently, he had seen him in concert. The year he saw him was 2013, which is 20 years after his death, which is physically impossible. Not only that, but in the early 2000s, he bumped into him in a shop and even bought a record from him there. Not only that, but he can't seem to get in contact with any of his friends. He tries calling and texting, but their numbers are all out of service. So this guy either thinks he's going insane or he somehow got transported to another universe, our current one in which Euronymous passed away in 1993. In our seventh spot today, we have the man from Torrid. Now, this might be a perfect example of some accidental dimension jumping. Now, you might be sick of hearing me talk about this story, but it literally blows my mind. It's one of my favorite stories, so I'm sharing it again. For those of you who don't know, in July of 1954, a well-dressed man arrived at the Haneda Airport in Tokyo, Japan. When he was questioned at customs, he said he was from a place called Torrid. However, as we know, Torrid is not a real place. So immediately the officers were like, red flag, detain him. Later he was placed in a hotel and was monitored by two guards. In the hotel, his room was placed high up and there was only one entry and exit point. Yet he still managed to escape. How he managed to escape is physically impossible. So, some people think that Torrid is a real place, but it's located in a different universe. And this man somehow passed through a parallel dimension and ended up at the airport. Others think that it's all just a made up legend. If so, then why did the story get international news and wind up in the papers? I don't know, it's up to you. You believe whatever, but I think it's freaking creepy. Coming in at number four, we have precognitive dreams. Precognitive dreams are dreams that can predict the future or they can provide you with information that you wouldn't have otherwise known. There are a number of people that have had this happen to them, including myself. I've had dreams and then the next day it's come true and there's no possible way for me to have known that this was going to happen. In fact, we have a whole series on dreams that have predicted the future, so if you want, check that out as well. Anyways, one theory is that these dreams are signals from your other self in a different universe. Maybe something is about to happen in your life and has already happened in their life, or they're sending you a signal in your sleep to warn you about upcoming dangers. Moving on to number three, we have the change of route. A couple of years ago, the next narrator was walking to work one day when they all of a sudden had an urge to take a different path. Every day, they took the same route, but today, they decided to go down a different way. So they turned and went down an alley. Now, I mean, any normal person would be like, no, don't go down that creepy dark alley, you're gonna get mugged or killed. But something was telling this guy that he needed to go down that way, so he did. And that's when he zoned out. He said that his mind went scrambled. He also said, and I quote, I felt like I didn't have a body anymore, just that I was a semi-conscious entity floating through some weird dimension. All of a sudden, in the array of different colors and shapes, a vision came to me. It was a bunch of strange looking people that in my mind resembled businessmen in suits. They looked startled and panicked that I could see them. One of the people made a quick movement and everything turned black. Then when he snapped out of this, he found himself on a completely different street back on his way to work. I don't have an explanation for this. Honestly, it seems like for a split second, he was looking into another universe or something though. And in our number one spot today, we have the portal. There's a cabin in the Markawazi Stone Forest in Peru that apparently is a ticket to another dimension. This story was told by a woman who one day was out camping in the forest with her friends. That's when they heard music coming from another area in the forest. So they decided to follow the sound and check it out. Then they came across a small stone cabin. It was illuminated by torches. What was weird is that they could see in through the windows and the people inside were wearing 17th century fashion. The women, being curious, decided to go check it out. In fact, one of the friends was a little too curious and she tried entering the cabin. She stepped foot inside when her friend pulled her away. Instantly, half of her body became paralyzed. It was the half that entered the cabin. To this day, she still remains paralyzed on that side of her body. So it's believed that this cabin would have taken them to another dimension. Since half of her body entered another dimension and then was yanked out, it threw off her nervous system, resulting in her partial paralysis. 
Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Hoya Bashu Forest. This dense woodland is located in the heart of Transylvania, Romania, which, as I'm sure you're well aware, already has quite the reputation for eerie and spooky things. The forest covers an area of approximately 250 hectares and is known for its unusual and unexplained occurrences, earning it the nickname the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. How convenient. The forest is known for its twisted and gnarled trees, which create a very haunting atmosphere, as well as the strange circular patches of land that dot the area known as Hoya, which some believe to be the result of UFO activity. The forest has also been the site of many alleged paranormal events, including ghost sightings, unexplained lights and sounds, and even disappearances, which is exactly why many believe it is a portal to another world. Some visitors to the forest who didn't disappear have even reported rashes, nausea, and feelings of anxiety afterwards. Despite its eerie reputation, the forest is also a place of immense natural beauty with a diverse range of flora and fauna. The forest is home to many rare and endangered species of plants and animals, including several species of orchids and woodpeckers. The forest is also rich in its history, as it is said it was once the site of a medieval fortress and was an important location during the Second World War. The area is also steeped in local folklore and legends with stories of supernatural beings and witches who are said to dwell in the forest. All in all, this place is jam-packed with spooky stories, strange occurrences, and beautiful but haunting scenery. All the things that make it the perfect place to enter another world. In our number 7 spot today, we have Socotra Island. Socotra Island is a remote island located in the Arabian Sea, about 240 kilometers east of the Horn of Africa and 380 kilometers south of the Arabian Peninsula, and it has has been described as, quote, the most alien looking place on Earth. It is a part of Yemen and is known for its unique and otherworldly qualities, as well as its rare and endemic plant and animal species. In fact, so many species here are endemic that up to a third of its plant life isn't found anywhere else on Earth. The landscape of Socotra is strikingly surreal, with towering limestone cliffs, deep caves, and white sand beaches. The island is home to unusual rock formations and the infamous dragon blood trees. This strange looking umbrella shaped tree have a red sap inside of them which is thought to be the dragon's blood of the ancients. In addition to its natural wonders, Socotra has a rich cultural heritage with a mix of African, Arabian, and South Asian influences. The island's inhabitants, the Socotri people, have a unique language and a way of life that has been preserved for centuries. Overall, this island is just truly otherworldly and it offers a glimpse into a world unlike any other with the island's landscape being compared to that of a science fiction movie set. In our number 6 spot today, we have Salar de Uni. Salar de Uni is the world's largest salt flat, located in the southwest of Bolivia, near the crest of the Andes. The area spans over 10,000 square kilometers and is characterized by a stunning otherworldly landscape. This peculiar place was formed by the evaporation of a prehistoric lake, leaving behind a thick layer of salt crust that stretches as far as the eye can see. During the rainy season, the salt flat becomes a giant mirror reflecting the sky and clouds in a breathtaking spectacle. It is truly unbelievable. It looks completely fake and is somehow super real. The unique terrain and climate of the area has also given rise to many unusual natural formations. The flat is dotted with small islands of rock and gigantic cacti, which serve as a haven for a variety of animal species. Yes, I said giant cacti. While this place is mostly devoid of life, plant or animal, that is safe for these cacti that can grow to be 12 meters or 39 feet tall. The area is also home to many active geysers and hot springs, as well as colorful lakes that are filled with flamingos during certain times of the year. In fact, in November, this place becomes a feeding ground for three South American species of flamingo feeding on local brine shrimps. These are the Chilean, Andean, and rare James flamingos. Aside from its natural wonders, Salar de Uni is also rich in cultural history. The area has been inhabited by the indigenous Aymara people for thousands of years, and they have maintained their traditional way of life and culture to this day. 
In our number 4 spot today we have East Scotia Ridge. In the southern ocean, about 2,400 meters down, you'll find this biological community or habitat that was discovered in 2012. East Scotia Ridge is a remote underwater mountain range located between South Georgia Island and the Antarctic Peninsula. The ridge is known for its unique and very mysterious geology, as well as its diverse marine life and harsh environment. It is dark down there, but it is also hot as it is being warmed by hydrothermal vents and it can reach temperatures up to 382 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely insane. Because of this dark, hot environment, of course we are going to find a whole bunch of new species that were previously unknown to us. Some of these species include a new kind of albino octopus, and also albino hairy lobster that's referred to as a yeti lobster, and apparently even a crab that uses its hair to grow a bacteria that detoxifies the water. Okay? Parallel universe, that's what I'm saying. In our number 3 spot today we have the Paris Catacombs. The catacombs in Paris are some of the most famous in the world. This is a place that holds the remains of more than 6 million people and it's also the source of an insane amount of urban spooky legends. This ossuary was created originally in an effort to eliminate the overflowing of the city cemeteries. To be honest, this place, after being built, was mostly forgotten, but during the 19th century it became a novelty place for concerts and private events, which is certainly macabre. After some renovations and construction, they became open to the public in 1874, and they have been the source of much mystery ever since. These catacombs are expansive, with most of them being blocked off to the public, which begs the question, why? In 2009, there is said to have been a video camera discovered inside the catacombs with footage that showed an unidentified man dropping the camera in fear of something that's also unidentified before running away into complete darkness. I'm just saying, although the catacombs sees a ton of visitors every year, I'm not convinced that we know all of what's going on down there. And I don't want to know. Keep your secrets. In our number 2 spot today we have the Moval Cave. This cave is located in Romania, just a few kilometers from the coast of the Black Sea, and it was first discovered in 1986. This cave has been isolated from the outside world for millions of years, and basically everything that goes on inside of it is different than what we are used to. The cave life is not based on photosynthesis and rather chemosynthesis. The level of oxygen in the cave is around a third of what is normally found in the atmosphere, and of the 48 species found in the cave, 33 three of them were endemic to just the cave. This cave looks absolutely terrifying, but thank goodness for the brave scientists who don't let that get in the way, because as scary as it looks, it is just as, if not more amazing to be able to hear about what exactly this cave holds. In our number one spot today we have the Zhangjiajie National Forest Park. This stunning nature reserve is located in the Hunan province of China, and it spans over 11,000 hectares, and is known for its towering sandstone pillars and breathtaking natural scenery. The park is characterized by its unique and otherworldly landscapes, which includes thousands of the tall sandstone pillars that rise up from the ground. The pillars are often shrouded in mist, creating a very mystical and surreal atmosphere. Visitors can explore the park's many hiking trails, which wind through dense forests and lead to stunning lookout points, including the famous Avatar Hallelujah Mountain that inspired the scenery in the film Avatar. You too can visit Pandora right here on Earth. The area is also home to a diverse range of flora and fauna, including many rare and endangered species. Aside from the natural, this is also a spot rich in history, as it was once the home to many ancient temples and shrines located within the park. The area has been inhabited for over 3,000 years, and visitors can explore many historic sites and learn about the region's rich cultural heritage. Overall, this national forest park is a truly spectacular destination that combines natural beauty, cultural history, and a sense of awe and wonder that is sure to leave visitors feeling as though they went to another world. Kicking off the list at number 10, Katie Rocks. You ever hop in the shower first thing in the morning and it feels like literal paradise? Otherworldly, some would say. Well, a new TikTok trend has me meditating in the shower now. Apparently, here we go. TikTok users left, right, and center are stepping forward, or rather backwards, with their claims on entering parallel universes. Nashville model Katie Rocks recently kicked this off and she used the social media platform to recall a 2017 trip to Paris that some of her classmates claimed missed the flight, although Katie saw them with her own 
eyes. I remember walking on that aircraft past two of my friends and sitting like three rows behind them. Then the four of us took a taxi back to the apartments we were staying in while we were in school and I distinctly remember this. Two days later they're talking about how they weren't three rows in front of us and to this day I have no idea why they remember missing the flight. That's way too close to the plot of Final Destination. Honestly this creeps me out just reading about it. I can't even begin to unravel this one. No way. The same user, Katie Rocks, posted again a month later. This time saying she's since discovered the ability to shift realities. Showers. Hot showers are the key, apparently. I would have guessed baths, but showers are cool too. We'll, we'll take those. Number nine, a familiar face. Username Highlife No Miller Light posted this one a couple months back on Reddit. Great name also, gotta, gotta say, that's a really good name. It's since got a lot of attention, uh, let me know what you think. They say, I'm from a very dry, hot state in the US, and I was visiting California on a trip with my wife. While out eating, we both witnessed a person that looked exactly like me. Same typical mid fade and head dents inherited from my father. Same body type, only chubby, rather than my more slim and athletic frame. I saw the side profile from the back as they walked away from view, and it was my exact face. That's so creepy. My wife had a direct view, but could not remember directly what my face looked like. But she noted similarities from my body to head, and even the way that I walked. I couldn't believe what we saw. Any thoughts? Question mark? I mean, if you didn't mention the head dents and got that specific, this wouldn't have stuck with me like it did. I also love the subtle roast on the other you. You're like, yeah, this guy was just like me, only, you know, not ripped. Otherwise, that's quite creepy. Thanks for sharing. Number eight, quantum leap. So yeah, I went down that rabbit hole I talked about and I discovered another TikTok. How fun, we love these, awesome. This quantum leap was obtained by Marion Valenza. She took to the social media platform to implore others to take the leap. You know, no more manifestation Mondays. The key to these quantum leaps is a hot shower. Yeah, a hot shower, how convenient is that? Thank God it doesn't suck, you know? Thank God it's not a cold ice bath or else no one would know. Valenza explains the first rule here. Number one is that you wanna give yourself enough time because you don't wanna rush this, obviously. You wanna do this with intentionality, she says. Yeah, sorry I'm late boss, I don't wanna rush my hot quantum shower. You know how it is. He's like, oh yeah, classic. Next step is to literally visualize the water cleansing you so that it removes all your limiting beliefs, the negative thoughts that you have, all the things holding you back from stepping into your higher self. Visualize not currently being late for work. And then there you go. You're set. I'm gonna try this tomorrow morning. I'm just gonna have a hot quantum shower and arrive at 10.15. Number seven, Sleep Street. This one comes from username Oopsies. It's like Oopsies, but with a bit more O. Oh. Reoccurring dreams have never been so haunting. Forgot, it's a dark list. Here we go. Ever since I was a teenager, I've dreamed about an alternate life where I go to university and work in a city that I've never been in. It started around when I was 16 or 17 and now I'm 25. It's super detailed where I go on hikes, I hang out with friends, I bike through neighborhoods and do mundane everyday life things. The university is outside of a major city City and I'm always exploring nature, beaches, islands, all that jazz. Last night I was feeling sick and in return had one of the most vivid dreams I've had in a long time. I met someone and developed a deep relationship that felt incredibly emotional and real. Luckily I woke up right when I was trying to navigate Google Maps to drive to a park so I remember the streets that we were on. The street was called Dutch Island Road. I never heard of it in real life so I decided to look it up. The only thing that popped up was a rural area in Rhode Island. It wasn't exactly the same layout of the roads I remember on the map but the nature and area looked eerily similar to what I saw while driving. I start looking around the area, clicking different locations, and I start to freak out on how everything looks just like in my dream. Mind you, I've never been to Rhode Island, but the weirdest part is that specific buildings in the Rhode Island University and Warwick area ones, those are the same ones that I saw in my dream all the time. I've always thought that my dreams are a glimpse of living an alternate universe, and I feel like this detail solidifies the potentiality of it being a reality. Thoughts? Uh, too many big words. Those are my thoughts. Potentiality, potentiality. I'm gonna start using that in the next list. You'll hear that from me in the future, for sure. Otherwise, so scary. Hope that goes away. Or doesn't? I don't know. Do you like it? I, would, I wouldn't like that. If I dreamt about an alternate life, I'm like, yeah, I actually have two jobs. It's exhausting. I never sleep. Number six, good times, dad times. Coming from Reddit user ApprehensiveHumor55, they say, when I was young, from the ages of around three to 10, I was truly convinced I'd already lived a full life. I remember being around 40 years old with a wife and three kids, two boys and a girl. And then one day I just woke up as a child and my past was all just a big blur with random memories that would come to me here or there. I'm smiling because this is funny, but like, it's so scary. This is my biggest fear, I think, in life. It made no sense. My parents said that I used to tell stories about when I was a dad, and they would just laugh it off and be like, oh, that's, that's your imagination, obviously. But deep down, I genuinely did have these strange memories of a past life. For instance, when I was four years old, my family went to Disney World, and the whole car ride down, I was telling stories about when I was a dad, and I went to Disney World. <laughs> just a kid in the back seat with milk, like, oh yeah, these roads. Still haven't fixed them. <laughs> 
The weirdest thing is that when we got to Disney World, I knew that I'd already been there before. I knew where everything in the park was and was essentially showing my family everything. At that time, my family just thought it was weird that I knew where everything was, but at the time in my head, it all made sense. To me, I just knew where all the rides were because of when I was a dad. After a while, I stopped telling these stories of when I was a dad because my siblings would always make fun of me for it. I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing, this is my worst, you, you, I'm laughing at you a little bit, this is crazy. Eventually, I just started going on with my life and haven't thought about much of it since, although I wish I did because the memories back then were much more vivid and real than how they are now. He's gonna be so confusing, 30 years to his kids, he's like, ah, oh, when I was a dad for the first time, Disney was way less busy. Kids are like, first time? What other family? What are you talking about? Why is mom crying? That's so scary. Um, I buy into this. I don't know, the afterlife, maybe that past dad died and then you were reborn? I don't know, that's scary. I don't wanna think of it. Number five, spirit animal. Do you believe in spirit animals? I kinda do, I want to at least. Ever since I watched Harry Potter, I always wanted a Patronus. Mine would be a frog for sure. It'd be like a little, little, little lanky frog. Wouldn't be cool at all. This next one makes me want to believe. Coming from user Less Cold, they say, about 30 years ago, I was a young college student heading back to college after break in an overnight bus. I was about 19, didn't drink or anything, had no history of mental illness, and was reading a book when seamlessly, I wasn't in the bus anymore. I was now swimming around a rock formation which I knew was part of my hunting territory and was chasing a fish, which I then caught in my mouth and could feel the bones crushing between my teeth and it wriggling against my whiskers. That's how they posted it. No, in between, they're just like, yeah, I was reading a book and all of a sudden, I'm a fish. I was totally at ease. I was fast and agile and I could feel the drag of the water, like, you know, the pull of the current, question mark. I like how they included that, mansplaining the current of the water. They're like, I being a fish know this, but do you know about this? I'm like, yeah, we know about currents, man. <sighs> I'll continue. As I moved effortlessly through it, I knew my body and where I was going and what I was doing and there was no alarm whatsoever that anything was amiss. You know, I didn't realize that I was really a 19 year old on a bus. The whole experience couldn't have lasted longer than 30 seconds or so and then just as seamlessly as I once was there, I was then again back on the bus. I remember sitting there for a second staring at the page of my book before, you know, having a WTF just happened reaction kicked in and then I had a bit of a mental freak out. Then a few years later I saw a documentary about sea otters and I knew then that that's what I had been for that brief moment in time. I knew it's impossible but it happened to me and surely I can't be the only one. I don't know man, I've never been a sea otter before. Chris, have you been a sea otter? You don't think so, you don't think, you never know, never say never though. Has anybody ever heard of something like this or have, has it happened to you? Have you been reading a book and then all of a sudden you're a sea otter eating a fish with whiskers? If so, sound off down below. Sea otters are just smacking the keyboard, they're like help, help me switch back. Number four, switching universes. Coming from Mulks23, this one is so specific that it may very well just be real, honestly, I'm a little convinced. I've been wanting to share this for some time now. A few months ago, one morning, I believe when I woke up, I did so to a different universe. Similar to ours, but different in some aspects. Before I went to sleep the night before, I kept my Surface tablet on my nightstand and it was absolutely fine. The next day when I opened it though, I could see a large crack across the top. There was nothing, repeat nothing, that could have caused the crack. I was disappointed, of course, the tablet's new, but I didn't think much of it. However, over the course of the following days, I noticed some things slash events are significantly different than how I remember them to be. An actress that I know was married to a gangster is happily now married to a businessman. A different actress married said gangster, a name that I would have definitely known. I'm from India and I settled in US and this is a Bollywood actress in question. A series that was being released on Amazon Prime is now on Netflix, question mark. Yeah, that happens all the time. I'm still asking those questions myself. I'm watching Harry Potter on like three different platforms. Like what's going on? The movie Morbius, I've seen this movie. I thought they must have remade this or something, but nope, it was a new movie. A few other things as well, but those I can attribute to misplaced memories. Not the above though. Also, I definitely did not hit my head or anything which could have caused me to remember things differently. I mean, after all of that, I gotta ask, how is Morbius? It doesn't look that bad, honestly. Hope Spider-Man's in it. Thanks for sharing, Mulks23. Hopefully, you're in the right universe. And finally, number one, 2016 again. This one caught my attention. It caught it real, real bad. Posted five days ago by user Silence v Silence. They say, the universe is currently shifting, and it has been the past few days. The last time a change took place like this was November 2016-ish. Some of you already know this. I'm sure you felt it in the air over the past week like I have. It feels positive. I hope it is. First comment has tons of upvotes here, and it says, your ears ringing real bad too, question mark? This is insane because my ears have been ringing a lot in the past month. I mentioned it to Olivia, swear to God. In our number 10 spot, we have coconut tree grub. All right, well, this food looks just like maggots. Just why, humans? What would possess someone to eat something that looks like this? Like, really, the first person that stumbled across this was like, hmm, yes, this looks delightful. I shall cook it under a hot fire and it will be 
delightful. No. You can't convince me that humans reacted to this that way. This was clearly discovered by some kind of reptilian person and pushed onto the masses. Or it was brought here from another dimension. Coconut tree grub can be found in the Peru jungle in, you guessed it, coconut trees. Apparently they are protein rich and taste scrumptious when cooked. Nope. I refuse to believe this. In our number nine spot, we have giant sea squirt. Giant sea squirt can be found in Santiago, Chile, off the coast. And apparently, these creatures known as Pura are as big as basketballs. Look, your girl's not really into seafood, but really, what in the name of my great aunt Sally is this? Honestly though, anything with a spongy like texture gives me the heebie jeebies, so again, I'm a little bit biased. It's little bubble like corpuscles make me so uncomfortable to look at it. Please leave a comment below and tell me why you think this looks edible if you do. Vice.com referred to it as looking like an alien living under a rock, and I would have to agree. In our number eight spot, we have Pololo. Not sure I understand why anyone would eat a worm like creature in the first place, but alas, humans still do, and I shall continue to be dumbfounded. Pololo are little worm like creatures with lots of legs that honestly give them an alien like look, of course, from the sea. They're basically worms from another dimension. They can be blue or brown in color. They they come out of the coral reefs every few years or so when the conditions are right, and when they do, they are apparently treated like a delicacy to the people along the coast of Samoa, where they are usually found. People apparently eat them raw, saying that they taste like liver fermented in salt water. Come again? <laughs> How does that sound appetizing to anyone? I don't understand. People also eat them sauteed or on bread. Yeah, I'll pass, thanks. In our number seven spot, we have horse rib and rectum sausage. Yes, you heard that right. In Kazakhstan, the people eat horses, and I must conclude that it's possible that they are not from our dimension. I mean, certainly not our continent, because I don't know any people that eat horses here. Although I don't leave my home very often, so I may be very ignorant. <laughs> Apparently the people of Kazakhstan don't like to waste any part of the animal, so they eat everything from the mane to the rectum. One of their known dishes, a sausage made from whole pieces of rib meat from the horse, seasoned with salt and pepper, and then stuffed with casings from the horse's butt, and it's dried to cure. Apparently it is a very normal dish in Central Asia. One that I will probably never try. In our number six spot, we have the sea cucumber. The sea cucumber looks like it would be food for another species, let alone for humans in this dimension. I could also imagine another parallel universe where the animals and plants on land are just too dangerous to eat because we've infected them with all of our nuclear testing, that we have to result to eating that which is deep, deep in the ocean, and so therefore, you know, then we have to result to eating sea cucumbers instead of regular cucumbers. Hopefully that doesn't happen because something tells me it probs doesn't taste the same. <laughs> the sea cucumber is found off the waters of Sitka, Alaska. Apparently you just throw it on a walk and pour some soy sauce on it and we're good to go, honey. There's so many different pictures of it that it looks like it can appear in many different ways, but most frequently, to put it bluntly, it kind of just looks like a giant turd. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree? L let me know in the comment section below. <laughs> in our number five spot, we have tarantulas. The people of Cambodia eat tarantulas. They must not watch any Hollywood movies, and fair enough, they probably have their own entertainment with their own brand of propaganda, but holy moly is this terrifying. They eat giant tarantulas, y'all. Apparently when cooked properly, they can be as good as lobster, as hard as that is to imagine. After they are defanged, washed, and then scorched to remove the hair, and then deep fried, they're apparently good, but still, isn't it bothersome to look at their legs and shape? I'm probably too influenced by American pop culture. I'm not even sure I'm convinced anyone from a parallel universe would eat these creatures though. I can get on board with people from another planet, but 
anyways. In our number four spot, we have giraffe weevils. Don't let the name confuse you. This isn't a dish made from an actual giraffe. Giraffe weevils are bugs that have extremely long necks that make them the giraffes of the bug world. They are basically beetles, and people have said that they look like something out of a Dr. Seuss novel. They are from Madagascar, and people like to saute them in salt water and butter. Apparently, they have a taste similar to shrimp. Anyways, I think they jumped into this dimension from another one because the idea of a long neck bug just feels surreal to me. So we're gonna go with that. In our number three spot, we have Incitae. Look, this is a plant, and even though it's not that bizarre to eat plants, I'm going to include this one because it's not widely known and perhaps bizarre to someone from North America or Europe that has never heard of it. This is a plant that is known to be a part of the false banana family, which basically means it's close to a banana, but it isn't. <laughs> it's only eaten in one area of Ethiopia, and it is considered a superfood there, which is quite interesting. And the people make it into a bread, and they love it. I'm a big banana fan, so I hope I get to try this one one day. In our number two spot, we have camel kebabs. I don't know why I am fascinated by the fact that I really didn't know that this was a thing. I mean, it makes sense that people eat this as it's as common in some areas as cows are in other areas. But yeah, it is regularly eaten in the Middle East and in North Africa. People find camel kebabs to be delicious. Apparently the kebabs consist of the organs such as the liver and testicles, which are sauteed and the fat goes into the meat grinder before everything is made into a kebab. This really feels like an idea from an alien or someone from another dimension, but it's probably because living in North America is like living in another dimension when you go to the Middle East. It's just such a different world. Ah. So much to learn, so little time. In our number one spot, we have octopus ink sacks. Yes, you heard that correctly. I know what you're probably thinking. Don't octopuses use their ink sacs to ward off predators? Would it not therefore be poisonous? It surprised me to hear that apparently not. Apparently you have to first poach the ink sac and then fry it. Typically it was eaten by sponge divers who were away at sea for months that they had to make do with whatever food they caught. It is a very known dish in the island of Kalamnos. However, it is hard to find because it's from another dimension. Dun, dun, dun. Shipping through the dimensions is just quite difficult. But honestly, unless it would somehow make me lucky, I would never eat an octopus ink sack ever. Okay, I probably could be persuaded if I was offered a home in Monaco or you know, given a million dollars or something. Coming up at our number 10 spot, we have cosmic inflation. The first half of this list is gonna be some scientific explanations for parallel universes, but don't worry, the science won't get that complicated because then I wouldn't be able to understand it either. <laughs> first, let's start off by talking about the theory of eternal inflation. This is the idea that ever since the Big Bang, the universe has been rapidly expanding or inflating, and different parts of the universe have been inflating at different rates. This means that there are some sections of the universe that haven't really connected up with the rest, yet creating a sort of bubble universe. While our own universe has inflated enough to breed galaxies and stars and, and physics and science and whatever else, these other bubble universes are still in the process of creation. They have the potential to be the exact same two hours, or completely different from ours. Or maybe there is a you in one bubble universe that didn't get that bad haircut that you still really regret. One time, my mom cut my hair like Marilyn Monroe. It was brutal. Coming up at our number nine spot, we have mathematical constants. Similar to that theory is the fact that everything in our known universe can be explained with mathematical equations. Think the Pythagorean theorem. Scientists know that the structure of our universe can be broken down into our mathematical structure. Math, that is, as they call it, without human baggage. They believe that because of this, it is entirely possible to hypothesize that there are other universes out there that are based around different mathematical structures, each universe having their own laws and rules based off of the structure. So infinite mathematical structures means infinite universes, some being just slightly different and some being totally, completely different. Coming up in our number eight spot, we have backwards universe. Two years ago, 
in 2020, NASA discovered what they believe is evidence of a parallel universe, one that is more than a little bit different to ours. Their team called Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, or ANITA, had been working on an experiment in, of course, Antarctica for a few years. A so-called cosmic ray detection experiment reportedly found particles that seemed to come from another universe, one that was also created when the Big Bang took place. While this evidence alone is pretty astounding, they also discovered that the particles appeared to be moving in reverse, leading them to believe that they had found evidence of a parallel universe where time moves backwards. While parallel universes are often just the work of science fiction and movies, we may be closer to finding the truth of the situation than we originally thought. In our number 7 spot today, we have Observable Universe. Now let's talk about what scientists believe about the shape of space. In your head, maybe you imagine a big sphere or even some sort of donut, but most likely it's actually flat. And it stretches out infinitely, like forever, never ending. And if it goes on forever, then at some point it has to start repeating because there is a finite number of ways that particles can be arranged within space and time. So if you looked far enough, you would eventually find another version of you, maybe wearing a different shirt or eating something different for breakfast. Maybe a version of you that didn't watch this far in the video, but hey, we like this version of you better anyways. <laughs> Unfortunately, it would be pretty hard to actually see this far down the universe because our observable universe only extends 13.7 billion light years, this being the amount of time light has had to travel since the Big Bang. So you can consider the space beyond our observable universe to be its own sort of separate universe, one that we just can't see yet and probably won't for a long time, if ever. In our number six spot, we have time travel. Think about time travel for a second. Maybe you thought of Back to the Future. The concept of this movie is that if you go back in time and change one small thing, it can completely alter the future. Some scientists believe that time travel is a definite possibility in our future. So if it is, why haven't we seen anybody come back yet? And have they been screwing around and messing things up? Well, it's theorized that due to the way they would alter the universe, when time travel travelers go back in time, they actually create their own separate universe where things change. A parallel universe that works to include them in it. That would explain why we have never seen any real evidence of time travelers coming back to our current time, or even any point in the past, because they did not travel back in time in our universe, but instead to their own unique one. Am I melting your brain yet? Let's move on to some simpler stuff. In our number five spot, we have different life. For the second half of our list, we are going to be stepping away from science and taking a look at some people's stories of their experiences with glitches in the matrix that may lend evidence to there being parallel or multiple universes. One day, a man was in his house when he became overcome with the urge to go outside and stand on his lawn. For a moment, he said he had the clearest feeling ever before he felt a slight wobble and everything began feeling slightly distorted. When it was over and he turned to go back inside, he saw his car in the driveway, the same make and model, but a different colored car. Car. But that wasn't the only thing that was different. When he saw his wife, he said that she definitely looked like his wife, but he just had this feeling that she was different. He also started having memories that weren't his and seeing buildings that, you know, there was no way he could have never noticed in his time living there. Entire departments from his work no longer existing. Is it possible this man jumped to a parallel universe where his life was only slightly different? Maybe. In our number four spot, we have wrong memory. This one is a story of a false memory, seeming like an intense version of the Mandela effect. The Mandela effect being when a large group of people all share a false memory of something, which we mentioned in detail on the previous list. This person says that they vividly remember someone they know dying in a car accident, texting and driving and going off an exit ramp that was still under construction. They remember themselves and their family and friends attending the funeral and everyone in their small town talking about it for weeks. Skip to 10 years later, even the person's fiance knew about it and knew the person's name because of how many times they had told the story. One day their fiance is looking at their sister's Facebook page and says, hey, isn't that the girl who died? 
The person came over to look, and it turns out that it was. Apparently also no one in the town after this incident had any memory of the car accident or the funeral that took place afterwards. So did this person potentially have a memory from a parallel universe where the accident had taken place? It's possible. Coming up in our number three spot, we have disembodied voice. People who believe strongly in multiverses and parallel universes usually believe that there are some places and occasions where the gaps between our universes are thinner, and it is easier for things to cross over or for the universes to communicate with each other. This story seems like one of those moments where the barrier was thin. When this person was around the age of 10, they were going to the beach with their aunt and friends when they were divided between two different cars. One of the cars didn't know the directions, so they were following behind the other car. When Suddenly, it took a sharp turn and they had to follow and do the same, going around a very sharp bend. Suddenly, they all heard a very loud, clear voice in the car saying, sharp bend, hmm? The driver of the car hit the brakes as they all looked at each other confused, confirming there was no one else in the car that had said that. There wasn't even anyone close by outside the car who could have said it. So maybe it was someone managing to speak through the thin barrier between the universes, or was it a ghost? You decide. In our number two spot, we have the motorcycle crash. Sometimes people experience situations where the impossible seems to happen, and maybe it is impossible, but only in our current universe. This person told their story of a death-defying crash. Six years ago, they were riding through town on a motorcycle going about 45 miles per hour. Suddenly, a woman who hadn't seen them turned left out in front of them, and despite the short amount of time, they remembered thinking about their options, whether they should go over or under the car. They laid the bike down and slid underneath the car diagonally. They slid across the pavement, no helmet, no jacket, just jeans and a hoodie. They slid about 80 feet before they stopped and were then able to stand up. No injuries, except a hole in their sweater, their bike having been completely mangled and torn apart. They knew that there was no way that they should have survived the crash, but somehow they did. A potential glitch in the matrix of the universe? Possibly. In our number one spot, we have takeout. Have you ever heard of Schrodinger's cat? Me either. <laughs> the idea that if you put a cat inside a box with a bottle of poison, the cat is in a state of being both living and dead until you open the box and find out. Well, it turns out that you know the food you ordered last night, your takeout, is also in a state of being your order and not your order until you open it up and find out. A man and his friend went to a Chinese restaurant where they ordered a chicken dinner and a shrimp dinner. When they received their boxes and opened them both, they realized that they had received two shrimp dinners. No big deal, just a mix up. So they close the boxes and get ready to go ask for a replacement. But before they do, the friend opens the first box again and instead of the shrimp dinner they had clearly seen before, it was now a chicken dinner, what they had originally ordered. They knew what they had both clearly seen. Was it possible that for a few seconds they had received their lunch from a parallel universe where they had ordered something else? Maybe. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have two phones. This story had my mind absolutely blown, but when I looked at the replies, it was brought to a whole new level. This story reads, quote, okay, I know this sounds a bit crazy. So to start off my story, my mom and dad are divorced and my dad just came to pick me up. But yesterday my mom got an infection somewhere in her lower abdomen. While my dad was driving to his house, my dad started to call my mom and she picked up, but they couldn't hear each other. So my dad hung up, but then like 20 20 seconds later, we both got a call at the same time, but by two different numbers. We both answered, and on the other line was my mom. We started talking and she sounded the same, but like I said, they were two different numbers, and me and my dad are just sitting there looking at each other like, are we losing our minds? We started to talk to, quote, my mom, and she was saying two different things while we were both talking to her. And now, I don't know if I'm losing my mind or what. Okay, so I was like, hmm, that story is really strange and I don't really have an explanation for what could have happened there. Then I look at the replies because you know who always has explanations? Redditors. And one user replied with their theory that this was a case of a temporary reality slip or merge. 
Like what in the world is that? My mind is blown. In our number nine spot today, we have The Nap. This wild story took place in 2022 and it starts off with the storyteller explaining that in that year, they took a nap and woke up in 2014. When they woke up, they were on the couch at their old job in their old uniform on a break. They knew something was wrong and that they were back in time, but to make matters weirder, they were like their 2020 self and what they look like currently, but they were in the year 2014, if that makes sense. From here they wrote, quote, I looked around and ran down the hallway when my manager stopped me and asked me what was wrong. I I asked him what year it was and he said 2014. I insisted to him it was 2020. I ran up the stairs and everyone was looking at me. Everyone was acting like I worked there the last six years and nothing changed. Everyone asked me what was wrong. Then they head to the apartment that they lived in in 2014 and it looked exactly the same and their parents were there who also confirmed that the year was 2014 and also began asking what was wrong and what was going on. This is when the story takes the craziest turn though. They open their bedroom door and their ex is lying in their bed, but this ex is also the current 2020 version of themselves, not the 2014 version, and they too have this awareness that they're back in time. They then went on to write, quote, they told me they, meaning the ex, brought me back. They were fully aware of what was happening. After talking for what felt like days in our old apartment, they left, and I went back to sleep in my own bed and woke up back in 2020 in my bed. I truly can't explain what on earth happened here, but it definitely is unbelievable. In our number seven spot today, we have, who was that? Okay. I'm gonna need your opinion on this one and what you guys think is going on here because this one has me a bit confused. So this post says, quote, this happened about two years ago. So my fiance and I were lying down in the living room. His face is facing towards me and my face is towards him. My face is looking towards the wall behind him and his face is towards the living room space. On the verge of waking up, my mom walks from the kitchen to her bedroom in which you have to pass the living room in between. She asks, are you both okay? Asking from her bedroom, not thinking much, my fiance and I both answer yes. In that moment, I got confused because I remember my mom telling me earlier in the morning that she was heading to town and she wouldn't be back until the afternoon. I get up from the couch, go to check her bedroom, and there is no sight of my mom anywhere. I told my mom about this and she confirmed that she had been in town from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. My fiance and I still talk about this to this day and we are still freaked out about this. So my first thought was obviously a dream, but the fact that they both experienced it is the thing I can't get past. So what do you think happened here? Some sort of shared dream experience, something to do with parallel universes, some weird ghost thing? At this point, I have no idea. In our number six spot today, we have the train to nowhere. It doesn't matter what train you're on, where it is, or whether it's underground or above ground, when the doors close, everything is lawless. I feel like trains are always the portal to another world, and this story only proves my theory. This story reads, quote, three years ago, I was riding a train, got my ticket checked and took my seat. A few stops later someone else turned up and seemed to have booked the exact same seat to the same destination. The same train conductor that checked my ticket earlier came, we compared our tickets, and it turned out I was booked on a non-existent train number with the same destination and time, but strangely enough, I had the same name as the one I shared a seat number with. Tried to check up on the number for my ticket afterwards and didn't get any hits for my actual train number. This is fully some platform nine and three quarters stuff that I cannot understand. In our number five spot today, we have Am I Really Here? Okay, this Reddit story starts off with the OP explaining that on February 20th, 2022, they dreamed that they were in a car accident. They then go into extremely vivid detail of the scenario that led up to the accident, the accident itself, and then the aftermath of it, and they could so viscerally feel all of the things as they were happening. Their car ended up in water and they found themselves unable to escape and they explained the thoughts that flashed through their mind of their family. Their phone was nearby and they managed to call their girlfriend who didn't answer and they left one last voicemail. It's all very detailed and horrifyingly sad. And they end it by writing, quote, I remember crying to myself, trying to think of something else I could do to get out of this, to survive, but the water kept rising and in the end, I simply stared up through it at the faint flashing light at the surface, blue and red. I prayed until my vision went black and I couldn't fight to hold my breath any longer. And then I woke up, alone in bed, freezing with a cold sweat, but awake and confused. I don't know how or why I'm here, because I died. I felt my body die. I felt the water enter my lungs and the pain that it caused. I felt it all. I shouldn't be here. 
So this person thinks that they passed away in one reality and jumped into this one where that was all just a terrible nightmare. That is horrifying. That would be the most terrifying experience ever. Was this just a very vivid nightmare or an example of someone who jumped universes? In our number four spot today, we have the real me. Okay, this story is a bit of a longer one, but it's so worth it, I swear. It reads, quote, I was shopping at a thrift store in a small town I lived in several years ago. I was looking around and happened to be near the checkout counter. An old lady came out from the back and said, are you, said my name. I said, yes, figuring I'd worked with her or something in the past, although she didn't look familiar to me. My name is not super common anymore, although I do see it on personalized items on a very infrequent basis. She was really excited to see me. She asked if I was still working at a certain school in a neighboring town about a half hour away. I was confused and told her I'd never worked at a school in that town or any town. She appeared confused and stated that we had worked at the school together for a long time. I politely said that she must have me confused with someone else. She seemed like she was kind of scared at that point and again asked if my name was what she had stated before. I said yes and she said, well, you look just like her. We chatted a bit about this other person and I asked what this other person's last name was and gave mine. She said she didn't remember but she could have sworn that I was her. We laughed about it and I finished my shopping and left. I didn't think much about this till a few weeks later when I was walking down a street near my house. A woman, not the one from the thrift shop, came out of her house saw me and asked if my name was said my name. I said yes. She also became excited and asked if I was still working at the school in the nearby town. I again explained that she must have me confused with someone else. She also said that I looked just like this other person with the same name and she also didn't know the other woman's last name. This actually did creep me out. I've been mistaken for other people before but not twice in the same month for a person who looks like me and has the same name with the same spelling. I think it is possible another Another reality crossed briefly with this one and this was the result. No one has mistaken me for this woman since. You guys, imagine how strange that would be. I swear, I wouldn't go anywhere ever again. In our number three spot today, we have the memories. Okay, this story starts off on June 16th, 2015. Our storyteller was really into visiting the skate park at this time and was on an out of town trip with their mom and ended up visiting a skate park while on this trip. While at the park, they unfortunately ended up getting in an accident that led to them being unconscious for a few minutes and having a few minor injuries, such as broken ribs. It definitely could have been worse and they were lucky to walk away from the accident, but during their time unconscious, they experienced something that they refer to as the seven minutes. During this period, they explained that their life flashed before their eyes and that they went through basically all of their memories and then it was black. When they woke up after some time, they began to realize that while everyone looks the same, no one shares any of the same memories that they now have. The ones they saw during the seven minutes. They have also stated that they now have this ability to feel when a family member dies and as an example, they explained that they told their mother of their grandfather's death 20 minutes before she got the call. I think that would have been a really weird conversation, but once the phone call came, it was likely quite eerie. In our number one spot today, we have breakfast in a parallel universe. Breakfast at Tiffany's or breakfast in a parallel universe, this Reddit story honestly could be the plot of a movie. The Redditor wrote, quote, my husband and I bought a country house, a place that we go to and work on most weekends. It's in a small town in Texas. One weekend we happened upon a restaurant that we had never noticed before. We entered and I remembered an older man, another customer with a cowboy hat on said, you can just seat yourselves. So we made our way to a little table that was open in the middle of the busy restaurant. We ordered breakfast, ate, and left. Everything seemed normal. One or two weeks later, we tried to find the same restaurant and never could find it. We drove all around the town and on each of the roads out of town and never found it. The building where I could have sworn it was was boarded up and abandoned. The building looked the same but long deserted. I feel like this could either be like a cool drama or an awesome eerie thriller, you know? But either way, this story would have had me extremely confused and questioning a lot of things. It's crazy to me that they both experienced the same thing because it takes away a ton of other possible explanations. Starting off this countdown, we have the ultra black fish. There are a couple of ultra black fish that are so dark that they are almost invisible. At least 16 species of these fish have specialized skin, which makes them almost impossible to detect. Their skin is so unique that they absorb 99.95% of all photons. This makes them blacker than black. Even under a harsh spotlight, these creatures appear as mere silhouettes. That's why it's also so hard to capture a photo of them. One scientist said, and I quote, it didn't matter how you set up the camera or lighting, they just sucked up all the light. 
So in a way, these fish have a cloak of invisibility, and that's why it's so easy for them to sneak up on their prey. With features like this, it literally makes them seem like they came from another universe. In our ninth spot today, we have the brittle star. For this one, I want to take a look at one brittle star in particular, and that's one that's named the Game of Thrones star. That's because its appendages look like the thorny crown found on the second Game of Thrones book cover, A Clash of Kings. Now, what's weird about these creatures is that they don't have any brains or eyes, yet they somehow know what they need to do in order to survive. Like dude, it's literally a brainless organism wandering around the bottom of the ocean, and when fish get close to it, they reach out their tentacles and wrap them in a spiral and then eat them. Take a look at them, they literally look like creepy little brainless aliens. I refuse to believe that they're real, like I mean obviously they are real, but like that's a creature straight out of a horror film. In our 8th spot today we have the black swallower. This is a deep sea fish with a big appetite, and it can handle more than it looks like it can. That's because it's slender in size, but its stomach can expand up to 10 times its original size. In fact, it can swallow big fish whole, and then the fish stays in their stomach which gets stretched into transparency. In fact, sometimes their food starts rotting in their stomach before they even get a finish digesting it. No wonder it was given the name the Swallower Fish. Just look at that thing. In our seventh spot today, we have the Pacific Black Dragon. Now, this is one of the sea creatures that is considered to be ultra black, so it easily blends into the depths of the ocean where no light reaches. Now, this creature literally looks like an alien from Predator. Look at this! Look at its creepy beady eyes and sharp teeth and like long chin whiskers. It's undeniably creepy. Now, the males are small. They grow to be about three inches in length. Now, they're the weird ones. They have no teeth, no chin whisker thing, and no stomach. And since it has no stomach, it's unable to eat. Isn't that weird? It literally lives only long enough to mate, and then it dies. Now, the female black dragons are the scary ones. These ones can grow to about two feet. Yes, two feet. And they're the ones with the big fang like teeth, and they have that whisker or barbell. At the end of that whisker thing, there's this little light that can turn on to attract prey. So, fish swimming by are like, ooh, what's this glowy thing? I hope it tastes good. And then they go to eat it, and then the black dragon is like, psych, it's me. And then they gobble the fish whole. They also emit poison, which is very dangerous and deadly to their predators. I swear, this video is making me scared of the ocean now. In our sixth spot, we have the the zombie worm. In another universe, we have worms that live in the ocean and devour bones. Just kidding, they're real, and these zombie worms are from our universe. Again, I really don't understand how they are real. So these worms are about one to three inches, so they aren't that big. However, they are very creepy. These tiny things like to devour great big whale bones, and their style of eating is pretty weird, especially since they don't have mouths or stomachs. So basically, they secrete an acid from their skin that is so strong that it can dissolve bones. This then breaks down the bones' fats and proteins from the inside, which they then digest. How delicious. Now, they don't just attack whale bones though, they'll tackle fish bones, even cow bones. I know what you're thinking, how are cows in the ocean? Well, sometimes cows or other animals get dumped into the ocean, so they'll take whatever they can get. That's not even the weirdest part, okay? The weirdest part is that the male zombie worms live inside the female ones. One study counted 111 males inside just one female zombie worm. Just one. Again, how is this real? Like it literally sounds made up. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the hagfish, also known as slime eels. Even though they aren't eels. Now, these ones gross me out because they literally look like human intestines. But what's even more gross are their feeding habits. So basically, they consume other sea creatures by burrowing their way into them. Here's an image of them literally eating a dead shark. They literally create a massive tunnel into the creatures and eat them from the inside out. Ooh. But not only that, they secrete the slime to ward off predators. The slime is so sticky that it can clog the gills of its attackers. Take a look at this video of it repelling a shark. Like what? The shark literally went to chomp it and then it got deterred. 
and the hagfish was left unharmed somehow. Moving on to number four, we have the three-eyed fish. Now, when this creature was discovered in 2011 by an Argentinian man, people went crazy. So he was out on a fishing trip with some friends when he caught this fish. A literal mutated three-eyed fish. Now it's quite possible that you've heard of this fish before, because in The Simpsons there is a three-eyed fish known as Blinky. Bart fishes it up near the Springfield power plant in season two, episode four. So people were like, oh my god, The Simpsons predicted this fish. It was especially eerie since the fish was caught in a reservoir where a power plant pumps hot water from their facility and the water is pretty polluted. Honestly, anything with multiple eyes are not from this world. They're just not. In our third spot today, we have the mutant sea creature. In 2018, a strange looking sea creature was found floating along the shore of a beach in China. Everyone was like, what is that? And they were scared to go near it. I mean, it wasn't anything they had ever seen before, but one man wasn't afraid. So he actually went near it and picked it up. And that's when the animal started moving its head and limbs. This creature, who is not yet identified, has a human-like head with some sort of short stubby arms and legs. There is range from a new species of sea life, to a mutated starfish, or a mutated sea sponge. What do you think it is though? Whatever it is, it's very creepy and alien-like. In our second spot today, we have the goblin shark. Now this is unlike any shark I have ever seen before, and that's because it has the weirdest face ever. Like I'm sorry, but it doesn't look like a shark. That's what I imagine a human crossed with a shark would look like. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. It was thought that 13 feet was the biggest that they could grow to, but in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big these creatures can truly get. Now this thing has one of the creepiest looking faces. It's got a super long nose with a weird Voldemort nostrils, pink flesh, making it look like it was skinned alive. And of course, look at its sharp teeth. But it gets worse. These sharks don't hunt their prey down. Instead, they wait for their prey to come to them. They're just chilling in the water. And once a fish gets close enough, they launch their jaws out and clamp down on them. Yeah, their top and bottom teeth are attached to ligaments so they can reach out and extend its mouth to grab its prey. And its mouth can launch out to about 10.1 feet per second. And its mouth opens super wide. It can open at a 111 degrees angle. And in our number one spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Now this fish, literally has a see-through head. Not only that, but the thing that you see there, which looks like a brain, is not a brain. It's actually its eyes. Their eyes can rotate in all different directions. They can even look up to see above them through their see-through head. You guys are probably tired of me saying this, but how is this a real creature? I'm sorry, but this fish has a glowing see-through head. Like that's not normal. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Tea Time. This story comes from someone who has a very strange memory from when they were around nine years old. They were eating dinner in their room for some reason that they can't quite remember. What they do remember, however, is being sat at their dresser, which had a big mirror. While sitting there, the storyteller's dad came in to check on them and asked if they wanted more tea, to which they replied, yes. They picked up their empty teacup and handed it to him and watched as he walked out the door. In the next instant, they looked back over and saw their same teacup, completely full of tea, right where they had just picked up the one that was empty. They of course asked their dad about this after because what in the world is going on, and their dad said that he never came into their room at all. This story is bizarre for sure, but there's also something really eerie about it as well. I can totally see why this was one that really stuck with them. In our number 9 spot today, we have the hotel room. This story starts out with a storyteller explaining that this strange story happened when they were on a family road trip. They write, quote, We stayed at a hotel for a night. Our room was nothing more than two beds and a restroom with a big mirror across from the beds. Everyone went to sleep but me. I stayed up playing a mobile game I was addicted to at the time. At about 2am, I went to sleep. When I woke up, I noticed something was just ever so slightly off. The mirror was gone, the room had two separate bedrooms, and there were three beds. Apparently I was the only one who noticed it because my family called me crazy. Still confused to this day as to what happened. 
It's the small changes like this that would have me absolutely freaking out because it seems small but you know something is off and different. I don't blame them for still remembering this day and questioning what exactly happened here. In our number 7 spot today we have a server's nightmare. This story starts out with someone explaining that it comes from a time many years ago when they worked as a server at a restaurant. The memory begins with the quintessential server panic experience where their co-worker forgot to punch in the food order for a three top. If you work in the service industry, you know the absolute panic that sets in, especially if you're like me and never write things down. You can't go back and ask these people what they had when their food should already be out and on the table. It's a panic like none other. Anyway, so this co-worker not only forgot to punch in the food, but also of course forgot what the order was. This storyteller was laughing at their stressed co-worker who was obviously trying to figure out what to do, and while laughing at him, the storyteller threw out a random order at them. They said, quote, it was probably fried mozzarella, a cheeseburger with no onions, and chicken fingers. While the story teller was joking and just having fun, it turns out that somehow this was the exact order that the table had ordered and the person needed. It totally freaked the storyteller out and they even made their co-worker let them run the food to the table to make sure that he wasn't making it up. Turns out the storyteller was right and probably saved their co-worker a lot of stress and hassle. In our number 6 spot today we have the camp photo. This story comes from someone who has always remembered this strange thing that happened years ago when they were 12 years old and at camp. They explained that they were taking a photo on a disposable camera because because cell phones were still in the flip phone phase and considering the fact that they were 12 even if they weren't it's not like they had a cell phone anyway. So with this disposable camera they were taking a picture of two of their friends that they had made while at camp. This is all fine and well of course and honestly very cute but it's what's seen in the photo that really has stuck with this person. They explained that in the photo one of the friends appears twice in two entirely different poses. They explain that it still weirds them out every time they come across it. In our number 5 spot today we have employee of the month. This story comes from someone who almost had a premonition of sorts. They explain, quote, I was sitting in my office one day when my desk phone rang and it is my under sheriff asking me to bring him all of the reports, dispatch logs, any documentation reference to a specific case so I get it all together and start towards his office. I meet him in the hallway and hand him the paperwork. He asked me what it was. I told him it's the blank documentation you asked for. He then swears he never asked me for it, that he had just arrived and had not called my office. He was on his way down the hall to ask me to get it together. I mean, at the very least I hope he gave this person a raise because while this certainly was a weird experience, that's also the most efficient employee I've ever heard of. I hope that's not the new work standard though. Like, what do you mean you didn't anticipate my needs? In our number 4 spot today we have the repeater. This story is one that only lasted for about an hour, but it definitely was a strange and confusing hour for the person who experienced it. Basically it started when they were watching TV with friends and they ended up landing on some sort of old 80s movie that they used to watch many years prior but hadn't seen in quite some time. All of the dialogue from the movie came flooding back to them and they remembered what each character was going to say next. Not so weird, our brains work in mysterious ways. This however seemed to open some sort of gate because when they changed channels and were trying to find something new to watch, this person was now able to recite every line of dialogue prior to it being said as if they had memorized it all, but this time it was with shows they had never seen before in their life. This then translated into them being able to predict what their friends were about to say right before them saying it. Again, this strange effect only lasted for about an hour before things return to normal, but what a strange hour that would have been. In our number 3 spot today we have the inside scoop. Maybe this is a parallel universe story or maybe this person is just a bit of a clairvoyant or something of that nature, but whatever you want to call it, this story is definitely a weird one. They write, quote, Sometimes I'll be talking to someone I've never met and very specific facts about them will pop into my consciousness out of nowhere, like this person had a golden retriever that died in 2009. Then they'll inevitably bring up the fact that I mentioned without me saying anything first, sometimes seconds later, sometimes years. 
This would be so strange and also so hard to navigate. You'd have all these things you seemingly happen to know about this person and now you have to avoid bringing them up until they do. It's like knowing someone's secret. That would be really weird. If you had this sort of ability, would you tell people or would you keep it to yourself? In our number two spot today, we have the wake up call. This story comes from someone who is explaining a very scary moment that their brother experienced that is kind of unexplainable. They start off by saying that it doesn't seem as though their mom believes this story, but they definitely do. Most of that is because they saw their brother after this incident and could definitely tell that something had seriously spooked him. They write, quote, he was sitting in the passenger seat driving home alongside my mom. A bright green car swerved and hit them, knocking bits and pieces of glass into his arm. He jolted awake afterwards, just in time to see the green car pass them. He claimed he felt the marks the glass left afterwards too. So basically, this guy might have somehow been in a reality where this accident really did happen, and then was able to jump realities to one with a better outcome. Or perhaps he was just temporarily transported to the other one before jumping back into this one. The possibilities really are endless when it comes to the multiverse, and I can totally understand how an experience like this would have somebody pretty shaken up. Whatever really happened here, I'm just glad that this person somehow ended up in the timeline where everything is A-OK. -okay. In our number one spot today, we have the boiler repairs. This story is a bit of a longer one, but it's so strange and truly like nothing I've ever heard before, it absolutely shocked me. This person wrote, quote, this didn't happen to me, but to my dad. He works for a heating and air conditioning company, so he often has to go out to people's houses to fix things. About five years ago, he told me he had a bizarre dream where he went on a call to an elderly woman's house. He'd never seen the house or this woman before, but he said it was bizarre because of how realistic the whole thing felt. He fixed her boiler in the dream, chatted for a bit, and then left. About a week later, his company gets a call from an elderly woman needing her boiler fixed. They sent my dad on the job. When he arrived, he said it was the exact same house from his dream and the same old lady. He knew her name before before he even had to ask and knew his way around the house without having gone inside yet. When she opened the door, she said, hi Gary. And when he asked how she already knew his name, she said she had a dream last week that her boiler broke and that my dad is the one who came to fix it. So she just knew that would be his name. Two complete strangers never having met each other had the exact same dream that they would meet each other and they did. The whole thing is so crazy. That would be so strange, but also so cool. It's almost like they were destined to meet each other in some way. Honestly, the unexplainable can be terrifying, but it can also be kind of nice and cool and truly mystifying. All I wanna know now is if Gary and the elderly woman kept in touch. Starting off this countdown, we have the deck of cards. Now, I don't know about you, but a normal deck of cards don't have number one cards. In replace, they have aces. But would you look at that? This odd deck had ones, which makes me very uncomfortable. I don't know about you, but I've never seen this before. If we're playing Go Fish and you whip out a one, I'm leaving, I'm sorry. Jokes aside, we have decks with aces because they can serve as the highest card or lowest. So it can serve as a one or more than one. That's why we don't have ones, according to Google. Don't quote me. So I don't know where this person got their cards from, but it just seems wrong. In our ninth spot today, we have the knockoffs. Sometimes brand name pieces can be expensive and we want the same or similar item, but cheaper. That's where knockoff brands come into play. Take a look at these cereals. They're so similar. Yeah, it's so different. So we got cocoa rice instead of cocoa puffs. We got honey nut crispy oats instead of honey nut Cheerios. Fruit rounds instead of fruit loops. Marshmallows and stars instead of lucky charms. Cookies instead of cookie crisp. And lastly, kids crunch instead of captain crunch. Now if I saw an aisle filled with those, I think I was transported to another universe. In our eighth spot today, we have the map. Now let's get to a serious one. In 1929, a group of historians discovered something pretty strange. It was a map from 1513 written on the skin of a gazelle. It was created by a well-known admiral of the Turkish Navy. Well, what's odd is that the map included Europe and North Africa, the coast of Brazil, several islands, and even Antarctica, which was not discovered until 300 years later. Not only that, but it was said that Antarctica was not covered in ice. The last time that occurred was more than 6,000 years ago. So this whole thing just doesn't make any sense. How did this man map a continent that's been covered by ice for the last 6,000 years? 
Maybe he's from a parallel universe or maybe the map is. In our seventh spot today, we have the stop sign. Again, another item that just makes me uncomfortable. Someone decided to create a lowercase stop sign, and it looks like it's like, stop, no, just stop. Like it's too gentle. As a wise movie once said, no, 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 stick to the stuff you know. It's better by far to keep things as they are. Don't mess with the flow. Stick to the status quo. If you know what movie that's from, I automatically love you. But maybe this person was driving around in another universe. Who knows? In our sixth spot today, we have the Aumuamua artifact. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that right, because in another video I didn't, so now I'm changing the pronunciation. Let me know if I get it right, just be gentle, folks. In 2017, this object was found flying by in our solar system. Now, it's quite weird. It looks like a space rock, but it's not a comet or asteroid. It's too small and oddly shaped to be an asteroid. This thing is long. In fact, this is now the most elongated known space object. Not only that, but astronomers were shocked by the condition of it. Astronomers thought that the first space rock to enter our solar system would be a ball of ice and rocks like a comet. But this isn't one. No. Not only is it not shaped like one, but there's usually a cloud of dust and gas surrounding comets, and this object just doesn't have that. But before scientists could study it too much, it left our solar system. All we know is that the strange object came from another solar system. Or maybe a different universe. And that's why it's so weird and unlike anything we've ever seen before. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Archless McDonald's. Imagine this, okay? You're hungry, you're driving down a road, madly looking for places to stop and eat, and that's when you see it. Off in the distance, you see two golden arches and you know exactly what awaits you. The one and only McDonald's. Except whatever universe this is in, McDonald's only has one arch. Like, hello, it's not Nick Donald's, it's Mick. So stop, okay? Or maybe someone messed up with the designing this restaurant, I don't know. Also, since when does McDonald's sell just bags of ice? Like, look at the sign. Bag of ice, one dollar. I mean, it's a steal nonetheless, but still, that's odd on its own as well. In our fourth spot today, we have the Ulfbert Sword. Now this is something scientists like to call an out of place object. And that's because the sword dates back from around 800 to 1000 AD, which is shocking since they didn't have technology to make such swords back then. Swords like this were made 800 years later during the industrial revolution. Not only that, but its carbon content is three times higher than other swords of its time. It also suggested that in order to make this sword, iron ore had to have been heated to at least 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Again, they didn't have that technology to do that back then. So many people are perplexed. Well, there are a bunch of theories. One is that it was dropped by a time traveler, or two, it might have come from a parallel universe. One that is far more advanced than ours. But let me know your theory in the comments below. In our third spot today, we have lost and found. A number of people on Reddit have shared stories in which they have lost something only for it to reappear in a place where it's impossible to. So let me explain. So one man said that he was with his cousin at Home Depot. Before they went in, the cousin grabbed his wallet, but he didn't have any pockets. So he asked the narrator if he could put his wallet inside his pocket so that he didn't have to carry it around. He agreed and he zipped it into his track pants. After shopping around at Home Depot for a bit, they went to check out, but his wallet wasn't in the track pants. So they retraced their steps thinking maybe it fell out, but nothing. So they decided just to go back to the car and return to the store later. When they got to the car, lo and behold, the wallet was on the dashboard. Which is wild, because the cousin literally handed him the wallet and he zipped it into his pants. Now, one person believes that what happened was the universe glitched. And maybe in another reality, the man just left his wallet on the dashboard. Somehow, those universes merged, hence why the wallet was on the dash. Now, it's all confusing how this stuff works, but that's me explaining it the most basic way possible. In our second spot, we have the little dino looking figures. In 1944, thousands of little dino looking figures were dug up in Mexico. Only problem is that the pieces date back to 2500 BCE, a time when no dinosaurs were roaming around and people couldn't have possibly known about about dinosaurs then. This is all according to scientists. So were there some other creatures that roamed the earth back then that we don't know of? Or is there a time traveling paleontologist out there? 
Imagine that, like Ross from Friends also being a time traveler. I love that. I don't know. Or the object is from another universe. And in our number one spot today, we have the ring. Now, this next individual has a similar story to the Home Depot boys. So, for her, she was washing the dishes one day when she heard a clink in her sink. Her ring that she took off when she was doing the dishes had slipped and fell into the sink and down the drain. Now, it was just a cheap one, so she wasn't too concerned. It wasn't like her wedding ring. So she decided to just go on about her day. In the end, she forgot that the ring was even there. That was until a week later when she was putting on her shoes and felt something poking her toe. She emptied out her shoe and her ring clanked to the floor. So somehow, the ring went from being in her sink drain to in her shoe. Someone explain that to me. I don't know, maybe house elves are real. In our number 10 spot we have Chick-fil-A. There is something called the Mandela Effect that is a term that was invented to describe a situation where a large group of people remember a situation different than how it is. But of course, if you brought an entire human race into a new dimension, how else are you going to explain how so many people remember different events and situations that happened to the ones they're being presented with now? Naturally, you would invent a term to convince everyone into believing that their memories are false and what they remember was influenced by a common eye trick or a memory trick. Like in the case of Chick-fil-A. A large group of people remember the famous restaurant without a K. I am one of those people actually. When doing my research on this, I thought the incorrect spelling was with the K. But in fact, Chick-fil-A always had a K apparently. The thing that nobody can question me on specifically is a memory I have of looking at a Chick-fil-A sign and thinking, as a kid, why isn't there a K? So take that, government. That's a very specific thought memory that you can't influence. Who else remembers it without a K? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number nine spot, we have Skechers. This is another label that has been questioned over the last few years by many, and it has also been attributed to the Mandela Effect. Most people agree that the brand Skechers spells their name S-K-E-T-C-H-E-R-S. -E -E but actually, in this reality, Okay, fine, perhaps maybe just in reality in general, who knows? The brand is spelt S-K-E-C-H-E-R-S. -E -E there is apparently no T. This is another situation where I personally remember it being spelt with a T. When I was younger, I remember writing about it in a report for school and I did not know how to spell it. I remember sounding it out and then when I looked it up, I was surprised that it had a silent T. Somebody explain this memory, please. You cannot convince me that it is Skechers with no T. It just doesn't look right. I wonder at what age do people start thinking that there is no T? That'll give us a good idea as to when we got transported into a new dimension. In our number eight spot, we have the Torrid Traveler. I had to include this story in here as it is such a wonder as to why it is not talked about more. Does the government not want people to talk about this for a reason? Possibly. In 1954, there was a man who was traveling to Tokyo, Japan when he got off the plane in Tokyo and was pulled aside by security for having a passport from a country that didn't exist. The customs officials grilled the man on why he had a fake passport and fake custom papers and annoyed, he insisted that his passport and papers were real. He supposedly had all kinds of of bank statements and documents from a country in Europe called Torrid. The police pointed to an actual country called Andorra, and apparently the man insisted that yes, that is where his country is, but it is called Torrid, and it's been around for thousands of years. The man was held in a hotel for several hours while the government analyzed his papers. The next morning when the government went into the hotel room to speak with him, he had vanished. Back to his parallel universe, I think. In our number seven spot, we have the case of Lorena Garcia. This is a very interesting story. I definitely think it is possible that this story was covered up as it is a story that a lot of people do not know of and may be shocked to hear about. A woman by the name of Lorena Garcia woke up one morning to find that nothing was familiar to her. Her home, her friends, her job, she did not recognize a thing. She still looked like herself and had the same name, but her room and basically everything was different. The story made a few newspapers, but it eventually died, as it would, of course, if it is a story that a lot of people shouldn't hear about so that we don't all start collectively putting the pieces together and questioning everything, as we probably would. People thought that she suffered from memory loss, however, all signs actually pointed to her being in perfect health, as well as nothing traumatic had occurred that would make anyone believe that theory. So. In conclusion, she probably slipped into a parallel dimension that the government didn't want us to know about. 
In our number 6 spot we have the backwards universe. An experiment was done by NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna or ANITA. ANITA darling. <laughs> A little 101 Dalmatians reference for ya. Gosh, I get distracted so easily. <laughs> An experiment was performed high above Antarctica where it was observed that there is a constant wind of high energy particles coming up from the Earth, and these findings showed scientists that these particles actually traveled backwards in time, which suggests a parallel universe. Quote Low energy subatomic neutrinos with a mass close to zero can pass completely through Earth, but Higher energy objects are stopped by the solid matter of our planet, according to this report. That means the high energy particles can only be detected coming down from space, but the teams and NITA detected heavier particles, so called tau neutrinos, which come up out of the Earth. Is this proof of another backwards dimension? Some scientists, such as Peter Gorham, believe it is possible. In our number 5 spot we have Star Wars. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> okay, this one could very well have been misconstrued over time as people have repeated this in many movies and it's possible that someone somewhere just decided to throw in the Luke bit so that people understood which character Vader was the father of. Makes sense. But still in online platforms people are convinced that at some point in time Darth Vader said Luke, I am your father instead of what is actually said I am your father. No Luke. Is this a sign that in another universe Luke was actually said? I don't know. This is a bit of a weak sign for me, but others disagree. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Did the government cover this one up? <laughs> in our number 4 spot we have the Triangle Phenomena. The Bermuda Triangle, the Alaskan Triangle, the Nevada Triangle. These are all strange places that puzzle people around the world. These are places where planes and people have gone missing on many accounts. It could be a strange coincidence, but a lot of people believe that these disappearances are more likely a sign of a portal to another dimension. Perhaps these people and planes traveled through these portals and ended up somewhere else, as not a body or piece of the planes have ever been found from any of these places. There has to be some explanation. Either that, or it's a government special operation, or there's mythical creatures getting in the way. There are so many theories around these triangles, but the number one theory is that they are a sign of a parallel universe. In our number 3 spot we have unidentified objects. Over the years there have been a lot of unidentified objects that have popped up around the world that no one can explain. Archaeologists have discovered items that don't belong in areas that they are exploring and at times there have even been objects that don't seem like they are a part of this world or from this world. A good example of this is a hammer that was found in London in the 1930s and this hammer is said to be over 500 million years old. Wow, when humans weren't known to exist. There was also an object that was found that is a sort of stone like computer that would have been from 2000 years ago and this object was found near a Greek island not too long ago. Many people believe these mysterious objects are traveling through dimensions and that they are a huge sign that there are universes that we are unaware of. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number 2 spot we have Area 51. Look, it is no secret that Area 51 is the most unusual place and it is probably one of the most guarded places in the world. But why? The government's explanation is that it's a secret army operation place. Sure, okay. If we wanted to plan future attacks or train for future wars, we will definitely need a secret place to do those things. So that's a pretty good reason and that's why it's believable to your average Joe that doesn't bother to look into it any further. But for the person that decides to look into some of the stories that surround Area 51, man, are there many they might think otherwise. The most popular theory is that there is a parallel universe portal inside as people in the surrounding area have reported disappearing and showing up in random locations. In our number one spot we have the particle test. There is a large hadron collider that is the largest and highest particle collider and is 27 kilometers below the surface of the earth aka in an underground facility between the France Switzerland border. It was originally designed between 1998 and 2008 by CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, as a collaboration project between 10,000 scientists and hundreds of labs and universities 
from over a hundred different countries. It is believed that the purpose of this device was to create a black hole in reality, which may take us to a parallel universe. Regardless of what they were actually doing, they did stumble across something pretty crazy. Apparently, the scientists threw a bunch of particles around at crazy speeds and noticed that the particles disappeared for a moment, and they were able to measure how long the particles disappeared for. From this experiment, it has been assumed that the particles traveled to new dimensions or planes of existence when they disappeared. One of the scientists at CERN by the name of Aurelian Barrow has even said, the multiverse is no longer a model. It is a consequence of our models. Well, sounds like proof to me. The government's gotta do a better job at hiding this. <laughs> In our number 10 spot, we have the tree hopper. I don't usually love insects, so this one just gives me the creeps to talk about. The tree hopper has over 3,000 plus separate species, and each one has a specific look that helps them blend into their environment. The tree hopper can be recognized by their vertical face and enlarged thorax, has a helmet that is tough and hard and comes in different shapes and sizes. They are usually about a half an inch in size. They eat liquid from plant stems and and as you can imagine, are always found in trees, but in warmer parts of the world. They are sometimes referred to as insect brownies. And that, once again, makes me feel alone in the world, because just why? <laughs> they are bugs, not food. Just no. But fun fact that actually makes them kind of cool, tree hoppers actually secrete honeydew. So I guess that's kind of cool. Number nine, the red-lipped batfish. Yep, a lot of words in that one name right off the hop. The red-lipped batfish, I gotta say, I'm a fan of the look. The red lipstick, she looks like she's ready for a night out on the fish town. But don't let those looks deceive you folks. Hiding in the depths of the Galapagos, these batfish can grow up to 10 inches long. And the defining feature here, obviously, besides their lips are their feet. Yeah, these bad fish have pectoral fins that allow them to walk on the ocean floor. Yeah, walking on the floor. A fish walking on the floor with lipstick on. What's going on here? Because they belong in the same family as an anglerfish, the red-lipped batfish also has an elysium on its head in order to attract prey. It's got like a clown nose thing almost. I wanna just go honk. I really wanna pop it. I know I can't, but I wanna try. I'm not a fan of deep sea fish, or any fish really for that matter, so this one absolutely creeps me out. I'm also not a fan of clowns. This fish checks a lot of those boxes, so I'm heading out. Coming up in our number eight spot, we have the axolotl. There is much speculation as to how to pronounce the name of this creature, but for the most part, most people believe that it is axolotl. But another one that I have to kind of admit that it sort of looks cute, but if I saw it in person, I would probably be terrified. Also, another alien looking creature. Did we just base our alien images and movies off of these kinds of creatures? Known to be usually brown, black, sometimes greenish, and white, but the white ones are bred in captivity. Apparently the white ones are long descendants of a mutant version of the male back in the 1800s. They were from then on bred to be white with black eyes. These creatures are actually very endangered. They are usually found in lakes and in canals in Mexico. What looks like little baby fine hairs on their head are actually gills. So cool. They eat small worms and fish. They also have the superpower to regenerate their jaws spines, limbs, and get this, even their brains. Whoa, arguably the coolest superpower I've ever come across in an animal. Number seven, stonefish. Yeah, this next one is great at disguising itself as a rock. So when it comes to deadly ocean life, that's just what you wanna hear. Nice, good game, folks. The stonefish is spiny, it's ugly, it looks medieval almost. Each of its 13 spines are all filled with deadly venom. So if you're taking a late night skinny dip, yeah, keep an eye out for any blinking rocks. Let's avoid that entire area. These fish look angry. They have John Wick eyes. They're on a mission. Something's going on in their soul. Its venom is very lethal to humans. So if you're watching from Australia, I implore you to wear steel toe boots next time you go to the beach. Stonefish don't use their venom to hunt. They only shoot venom out of their spines if pressure is applied to them. That's worse than anything. The odds of accidentally stepping on one of these guys is significantly higher than any other fish. Because, like I said, they look like rocks that blink. Remind me to never swim in the ocean again, or just go to Australia for that matter. In our number six spot, we have the star-nosed mole. Somebody convince me that this isn't an alien. How is this a real creature from our planet? Being the creature of everyone's nightmares, the star-nosed mole has quite the positive sounding name, like extremely unfitting in my opinion. I would name it the spider face mole. 
Is that not more appropriate? All jokes aside, the star-nosed mole actually has its own record for being the world's fastest eater, as it is said that it can eat an insect in a quarter of a second. Its star, or spider-like face in my opinion, is actually an organ, and it has over 100,000 nerve fibers, which makes it one of the most sensitive organs on any mammal to touch. The star-nosed mole is found living in the wetlands just along the coast of the US from Canada to Georgia. They are actually known to be blind, but they have mastered their senses and they can swim and smell underwater. Most of their life is spent hunting their prey underground and they usually live about two to three years. Number five, the blue dragon. This one sounds like it's from a different time, let alone a different universe, oh my god. The blue dragon, aka the Glocus Atlanticus. First of all, it looks like it's from Pandora. This thing is bright blue. It's a blue sea slug. Believe it or not, it's a gastropod that just decided, you know what, I'm too cool for a shell. Don't need it. And to be fair, when you store poison in your fingertips, you don't need to hide, right? The sea slug can often be found in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Ocean. They favor tropical waters, obviously, who doesn't? And they literally adapt to survive. They eat Portuguese man o' war, these deadly jellyfish looking siphonophores, and during this process while feeding, blue dragons will literally absorb and then store its prey's snidocytes. They will take its toxins from them and then store them in these small sacks. Yeah, they're literally stealing from you. So you never know what kind of venom is being held at the time. Yeah, they steal your loot. How rude is that? You could poke one and be like, oh, poison. See ya. In our number four spot, we have the pink fairy armadillo. Okay, this creature looks like it belongs in a fairy universe, and clearly its namers would agree. If I were to be an ugly creature, there's no way I would choose anything but to be a pink ugly creature. Way too many people online call this terrifying creature cute. And now I'm sure the world has gone insane. Also, I'm just not a fan of armadillos, so I'm biased. The pink fairy armadillo grows to be about 2.5 to 4.5 inches long. It can weigh up to four ounces and they can live up to 10 years. They're usually found in central Argentina in grasslands, plains, and dunes. They love to eat plants, worms, and insects. They protect themselves by curling into a ball. They have pretty silky yellowish white fur and what looks like pink armor is actually just blood vessels under its armor. Hmm. They have been so hard to find, so scientists haven't spent much time studying them to date, probably because they're jumping back into their fairy world dimension every now and then. Number three, Brood X Cicadas. Okay, this one sounds like a Marvel villain, Brood X Cicadas. Hold on to your butts for this one, really. This one is absolutely insane. Over the past couple of years, billions of cicadas came from the ground all over the United States for the first time in 17 years. They were just underground waiting for so long. At the same time, they all just came out and surprised us all. Thing is, they just happened to be born with a fungus made of the same chemical found in poisonous mushrooms. So they didn't have a great time. Yeah, they were a little confused. They didn't feel too hot. The fungus ate away at their bodies, so much so that their butts literally would fall off. They would fall off, they would lose their butts because white spores are pushing them off at this point. These cicadas don't even know what they're doing. They're calling this a zombie virus for bugs. Yeah, more than fair, their ass is falling off. But you can't say that now, can you? What's really happening here is a process called massospora. These poor things just want to mate and move on, but now both males and females are making cicada catcalls, so their whole system is now ruined, all because of this fungus. These cicadas aren't a threat to humans, thankfully, but their tragic summer of 2021 is definitely worth mentioning. We had a bad 2020, cicadas, they had 2021. We're sharing, sharing is caring. Coming up in our number two spot, we have the California leaf-nosed bat. It's hard to imagine that this extremely cute but also terrifying creature exists, so it must be from a parallel dimension. That's all I can conclude. This creature is of course a part of the bat species, but it has one big distinguishing feature that makes you think that it should be a species of its own. It has Dumbo-like ears. Yes, I'm referring to the Disney movie Dumbo, where the elephant has abnormally large ears that end up acting as propellers and give him the ability to fly. Bats can already fly, so sadly his ears are seemingly pointless to me. What's the point of having big ears if they don't help you fly, is all I'm saying. They are also known to have leaf-looking growths on their nose. They live in caves and mines in the deserts of the US and Mexico. They eat grasshoppers, beetles, moths, and crickets. Their ears are about 1 to 1.5 inches in length each, and they don't usually migrate because their wings are too short and broad for traveling long distances. Would love to know if you think the idea of a big-eared bat hitting you in the face would be terrifying or cute. 
Let me know in the comment section below. Number one, Bulldog Rat. Recently at Most Amazing, we've covered projects that are aiming to bring back extinct animals. That's kind of fun. The Lazarus Project aims to bring back extinct woolly mammoths. Yeah, we can see them return in the next eight or nine years, which is terrifying but exciting, science-wise. That's lovely. Let's save animals, sure. As long as we don't bring back the bulldog rat, I'm happy. Of course, being way larger than black rats, the bulldog rat was thankfully last seen around 1903. The same time speed walking was introduced to the world. It's because everyone was booking at home because of these things. That's, that's my personal theory right there. They have two to three centimeters of fat on their backs. So disgusting, with short tails and thick hair. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing holly or jolly about the bulldog rat, except for the fact that its home was once that of Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. They were thriving until sailors discovered said island and they brought with them infected black rats. So it was like West Side Story, but like rat version, it was crazy. So when they pulled up to the island, Christmas Island, they brought with them all these rats and then they riddled everyone with disease. So it took less than a year to wipe out an entire rat species. Honestly, I'm okay with that. I don't like rats at all. If you're a rat person, sorry. Cool tricks, but nope. 